My guy's going to play two tables of $5 games, see if we can hit the million, that would be nice. But just in general, concentrating on where we can make chips, basically, some adjusts we can make. And I'll give you guys an idea of a general game plan. So we have a button limp on the left, already good info. On both tables, actually, so I'd say recreational on both. You could go all in here with ace three, or you could check back. Eva's going to be fine. Same here, you could check back, or you could ice a non all in. I'll go for a non all in ice over King Jack. Ace three is pretty close. You can jam, and you're going to make a lot of EV. But also checking back makes a lot of EV too. We can give both these a little tag. So against one person, I might bet here. The problem is against two. Very likely one of them's hit a piece of this board. So I'm just going to try and realise the equity. Here, just folding. Okay, I've hit a pair. So now I've got a pair and draw. Again, not really looking to blow up the pot. Here, just definitely calling. Even versus small sizing. We're going to be dominating a lot of his type of pair plus draws. I don't want to keep any total bluffs in. And versus really small sizing. Still not folding. Sure, you can sometimes have a weak queen. But... Random players will sometimes do this with worse pairs, so uh, not folding. He had the nuts, so uh, nice hand by him. King Jack can go all in in theory or non all in. I'm still fine just taking the all in, actually. We'll get called by many worse. At this stack depth, we could go non all in, but I actually don't mind to just jam at this stack depth first for limp. And this is another recreational play by the looks of it. So definitely fine with that King Jack call. We'll definitely just be raising the jacks up and all in. Looks like our player could be timing out here. Okay, finds a call. This is something recreational players will do a lot more than regular players, which is flat the small blind, which increases the EV of our good hands and lowers that with like our bottom button opening range to just get less folds. First off, and obviously we get aggression like this, which is great for our value and not great for our weak hands, right? And a nice result for us here. Eight seven suited versus reg. Could think about a big ISO or ISO all in versus a random. I'm just gonna check it back. Here I'll limp in with any suited hand. Okay, no leading into two plays. Here I don't mind to actually raise even versus an unknown recreational player. We just get enough folds in general on these very high disconnected boards. Looks like the player's fighting back. That's fine. We just have to fold now with a pure bluff. We do have some combo backdoors, but still not looking to over-invest. We're just trying to take the pot down with an aggressive raise. When we get raised ourselves, no need to fight back. This hand can do either. Without info, I like to start with a lot of raising. A very connected board. Our hand's going to devalue over time. It's not got many... Great turns, we don't really want to start blurting the pot, so starting with a check is going to be fine. Here, calling. Hitting a dream flop, just checking it over. Wouldn't be surprised to see a recreational play just jam sometimes here. Here, already pretty ugly spot. I think if he's got an 8, we have insane implied odds when we hit our 4 card straight versus where I'm going to call. And here, I'm just going to call and let him blast off in case he has any trash. Not looking to call here, though. Sometimes he might just have a king or a flush draw and give up, and we occasionally win at showdown. But we're mainly calling to try and hit our straight and get a recreational play to over invest with an eight, basically. Here, I may as well just go all in. He might still even call us with some ace high occasionally when some all the draws brick. All in with ace eight. Nine, ten, go either way. Could check to try and pick off some bluffs, or we could bet. We can bet twice with this hand, so I am just going to bet. He gets out of king, queen, fine call there. And here I think we should just try and bet again for value. You're not going too big there. We're limpish, he's had some probes, he re-raised our raise. Maybe not the guy to spam min raise against. Okay, just going to fold if he bets here. 
We have to go all in there. Not a great situation that we got flooded and see this board. Yep, just fold in now. This is a fairy fold. We'll just make it. He's shown he's have some kind of fight on paired boards previously. He's had some ISOs, so just limp. Standard ISO by him. He's not done anything wrong there. Just unlucky. He runs into my ace queen suited. From Lithuania. Maybe the guy's a reg. Well, he hasn't done anything out of the ordinary yet. Shouldn't really have many offsuit ace x and not a ton of offsuit king x. So our 10 high flush draw here is really high up. With the gut shot extra equity, I'm just going to raise it. And if we get jammed, I'll just stack off. King Jack's not going to perform great with a check. So I don't mind betting half pot. Here I said once, we don't want to see this, but once we get it, we've got to go all in. We'll be flipping versus a queen, as you see. The main idea of a flop, bet flop with the King Jack is equity realisation. However, this is a really bad turn. Complete some of his draws. The second backdoor flush draw opens up. We haven't improved to anything ourselves. I don't mind to check fold it at this point. We'll have gathered some fold equity with our half pot on the flop. We've realised our turn equity. We've done what the goal of my flop bet was. I'd rather apply pressure on a more blank turn or even like an ace, a queen, something like this. That doesn't really connect. And can put pressure on some lower pairs and you just have way more backdoor hands that flirted and missed. Here it's hard for him to have too much which flirted and missed. So that's why I'm just going to check fold for turn. When a random player checks to us, we have a profitable stab with any two cards in this situation. This board not being one of the best, but still we're going to achieve over fold equity needed. So I'm going to go for it. Once we get called, triple barrel will be profitable. So we'll bet check bet. I'm fine with both of the options. Here we have can hit the straight both ways. So I'm actually going to go for the triple barrel option, just a medium size and followed up by around three quarters on the river. Here, just raising the flush up. Can even go bigger, to be honest, versus random players, not folding a king anyway, or a high flush draw. And now sticking with our three quarters plan here on the river, we even block the flush. And we take it down, which is nice. Trying to fold many of the lower pairs there, and even just... When he's got a draw with a higher card himself. Ace fold just got a fold. Queen four suited, not quite cutting it either. We can go all in if he limps, he just folds for King Falls booted, not gonna be calling here. Ten six if we get the chance. Well Queen Nine suited will play, play with a limp or a non all in raise. I'm gonna limp because I don't know the player. If I know he's a reg, I would probably just fold this. It's about on the borderline. First an unknown player who wants to try and expand our V pip a bit. And against unknown players, we can bet way more than theory, so I can bet all my bluffs pretty much here. We even have nice properties blocking some draws with the 10. We block both the backdoor flush draws by having spade and diamond combo. This 4 is going to be much better for him than me, as way more 4x than us. And we block a ton of all these gut shots, right, with a 6 and 10, which was good on the flop, but not great for turn forward equity, so I don't mind to give up. 5-3, you can call, it's about break even in theory, but our equity realisation is actually not better than theory against recreational short stack there. We do too much jamming and betting big, so I'm going to struggle to realise the equity with 5-3. 10-2 is a little bit wide. We could bet check bet here, but I don't really like it with our hands properties. So I'm just giving up the pot at this point. Hard for him to have too many worse hands. Ace Queen will definitely want to just be going all in here. King 10 will call off a jam. I'll try and limp the Queen 3. So we could go all in or we could call. I think either's an option. We don't really have any information on the player. I'm I think both options are very, very close, to be honest. We get a great flop. 
we don't really need to raise this hand. We can get it in on literally every turn anyway. So just going to call. If he's got there, it is what it is. He had queens, so just a cooler situation for us there. But happy with how we played that one. 10-6, going to be a fold. Ten three again, a hand we want to play. We can either non all in or limp it. We'll limp. And yeah, he says, us okay, we need to keep an eye on if it's going to keep doing this. We should defend very wide deep versus min raise, but two three is one of the very few hands we are just allowed to fold. But you really don't want to be folding many hands at all there. Okay, definitely looks like a recreational using such a large sizing. Jack's here. It's good enough to stack given the SPR. Would we rather start with a bet flop or a check? I think check. He's not going to have too many hands with a ton of equity that missed. And the hands which have equity all have decent equity. So just giving him a chance to potentially bluff. I think I'm almost always good when he uses this sizing. Question is do I want to call and call a river bet or do I want to raise now? I'm going to call given that there's so many bad rivers raising might be a bit harder to navigate the pot if we raise it comes four straight and he donks all in for example if i just call on any of the blank has this have an easy call on the river we don't know the guy the line doesn't make too much sense many draws miss so i'm going to call wow he had aces nice hand fair enough Do we want to bet here? I think yes, we definitely can have some value. When they double check, they shouldn't be super strong. Maybe probably at best an 8, a very weak 10, so not going too big. Ace-Jack, we're going all in. Freeze is going to go all in as well. Okay, we lost with a freeze. Ace Jack will be all in at 11 big blinds. See if we can double up. Get called by 9 10, which is definitely not a call. Here, we should may as well just put it all in. It's not really a hand that's going to be able to donk jam many flops with one left, so just putting it in. We have to call any with three left. Twos will jam versus for two limps. Looks like we got there with our two three, which is nice. King 10 will fold. Queen 3 definitely got to go all in. We got there again, so unfortunate for this player. Queen's a very nice hand. We could limp and guarantee we play against this player who is probably a recreational. And I think that's going to be the best play here. Okay, a board where if he's got a king, we're always going to get the stack anyway. So betting will be mainly to target a two, but the board's so disconnected that we're going to have extremely high fold equity here that I'm going to check and give him a chance to actually hit something. There's a random player we can actually pro bet any two pretty much profitably. Here, just going to start betting now. I don't want to go too big though. I want him to call every 9x he might have. Well... Start with a lot of min raises to test this player out. We've already seen he just check folded on that paired turn. Okay, pocket queens. We could jam. We could non all in. I think Eva's fine. Maybe this gives him a little bit more room to make some more mistakes. So let's do this. And we can check or we can bet small. Which do we think he'll make more mistakes? Because I think either way he's going to be very aggressive. So I'll just bet small. Call him with a six. And unfortunate for him, I guess. He gets there, though. We play another. Okay, so we called with our six pretty standard. Turn two pair, unfortunately, didn't barrel. This means it's very unlikely he has a queen. We block some eights he could hit. If he has a jack, will he open the action up anyway? A reg would. A recreational necessarily might not. So I'll just bet for value myself. Versus a reg, I don't mind the idea of checking. But this a recreational, I'd rather bet myself and make sure we get that value from a jack. As they don't often open up the action of bet check bet line that often for that kind of second pair type value. And he did river the jack, so it worked nicely. King six will be all in. Eight six. 
we can bet, but we're going to need to barrel quite a lot if we bet here. So I'm going to start with a check and look to go for some delay bets. The downside of checking is we can't check call this out of position. And I think bet and check, both options are going to be very close as long as we fire it up with future street aggression when we do bet. 2-9. In theory, we shouldn't play this hand. In reality, I'll still let it go at 8 big blinds. If we're a bit deeper, I'll definitely still play it. But I think at 8, we should, probably should still let it go. 6-3. Nothing we can do there. 10-7. We can go all in or limp. We haven't seen him be particularly super passive yet. So without that information, I'd rather just take the jam. They overfold the jam, so our jam does overachieve. Obviously, if the guy's very, very passive, we should just limp and exploit him that way. But without knowing that, better to take the guaranteed overfold for when we jam. Again, 9-2, just not cutting it. Aces cuts it, but unfortunately, he's got no chips. Easy call, queen 10 suited. Looks like we've won another all-in. This guy's getting a bit unlucky with winning all-ins to win the spin. 2-3, not going to cut it. Again, starting off with a lot of raises. Test our villain out. We'll try and limp the 4-2 suited. We haven't been limping every hand, so maybe we get a little bit more respect. The body shouldn't really have an ace or king. We can just bet for short. Take a lot of folds there. We definitely have to continue if he bets it. And I think raising would be better than calling. Okay. We can probe very, very aggressively here versus unknown players. However, this hand's going to be good enough to take showdown versus an unknown player. So I'll start with a check. And just looking to check it down. It's not uncommon for an unknown player to just have eight high and check it all the way down. So we don't have... We have some showdown value here. If I had a lower hand, like 9, 10 high, I'd have bluffed it at some point versus an unknown player. Versus a reg, we have to construct our range way more theoretically correct, which would be looking to probe more equity hands, like some 4Xs, 6Xs, etc., and less total random hands. Versus a random player, I don't really care about constructing the range in a more theory way, just in a more exploitative way. And we won this one. Cool. We saw he limped king-queen. Definitely going to check raise here if he does bet. We saw him check a high card down last time, so very possible he could have a king. I think the best way to stack a king is not to bet. It'd be to check raise, so that's what I'm going to do. It gives him a chance to bluff any air as well. But definitely not check call and check raise. And I want to make sure we get a king all in by the river. Five would leave... 12 into 17. I'm going to go 6. We'll try limping the jack 4. Okay, looks like we just picked off a bluff. We could call and let him barrel, but I think when we're that deep, it's just more important we always stack a king. We bet here. If we get a fold, it's good. We still have some plenty of nice turns holding the jack of clubs. Check call is another option, but I prefer betting in general. But this is one of the worst turns. We didn't get a club. This five interacts a lot with natural defense on this board. If he bet any reasonable size, and I'd always fold. Verse one, we almost get direct odds to outdraw if he just has like a five or a six. If we factor in maybe some implied odds, we should probably call here. Also, factoring in a recreational can sometimes just have a worse four. But I think we're going to be forced into a call, but not loving the spot. And he does have a six, not surprised to see that. But we was just given two good prices. So when we limp this in theory, it's very often a limp jam. But it's going to be very similar EV limp call. And there's an unknown player. We don't actually know how often they're isolating. So I'm going to limp call. And I know the five's coming, right? <laughs> I'll just call, especially when we have the ace, I think. And a very, very quick check. I guess we can still bet just small, giving him a chance to call in like King Jack, King Queen type hands. And obviously going all in on the river. He had a very quick call on the turn. 
king nine so that worked out really well for us there definitely a hero call pocket kings we can bet small or check i'll start with a check our hand needs no protection if he's got a hand like jack three of clubs he's almost got zero equity if he's got an ace we've almost got zero equity so if you want to check range kings is like a premium hand to check and we'll just see if he wants to spaz off at all could take a note here about the king nine being very stationary but i'm not going to be playing these games that often so i don't really need the notes but not just that i don't like to make super huge assumptions based off one showdown because he might still overfold to medium size and say bottom pairs for example I'll check and give him a chance to bet check bet bluff first one i think we can still go for a small raise for value here you saw him i said king nine so not folding jack four here and we got some value cool so this guy didn't fold a high card after bet small and check down previously so if we call this we're not going to be able to bluff i think that's still fine what did we get called with here a 10 makes sense definitely a recreational player limping 10 3 and yeah just bold in here we're basically always going to be behind unless he has some very polarizing bluff we just didn't hit and that's fine we're not going to have much equity versus value hands there anyway with just one street to go we're looking at like 18 percent if he doesn't block our flush it's not a disaster to fold the other option is to raise a flop and just get it all in the more bluffs we think he has on the flop the better that would be here we don't have a heart or spade just a queen high only one over to the seven i'm just gonna fold we saw he was sticky on the iso pot so probably not the best guy to attack super wide with check raises especially with hands that would just be a fold in theory our hand just has no good future playability here i don't mind to just fold on these straight possible boards your bottom and middle pairs with nothing else to really go with it are already very 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 marginal calls and if you factor in that recreational players often bet way too much middle pair themselves it again devalues these pairs a little bit even more and they have high barrel after bet all of these things factored in together i can get behind just folding the flop especially when we're really shallow there and we just don't really have almost any implied odds on our two pair and trip outs Although I think this guy might be a bit stick, I'm still going to check raise this hand just because it doesn't perform well versus barrels at all. And very easy to oversee, but in a limp pot, a king 6-2 board. Here, yeah, don't expect him to have many ace -X. I don't mind to go for a triple barrel. The goal to be trying to fold a 10 and queen X. Ace-3, will I so all in? Fold the 10-5. Okay, limp call king 10. Not fantastic, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Just betting. Way too much forward equity to not bet. This is not a little limp in theory, but we can try and make it. Maybe the fact he's just lost a big pot there means it's not the best game dynamic to make it. But in general, versus a recreational play, we should try and make it. So king 4 suited is a theory call. And actually, versus recreational players, they do find jams to make this a call one of the main reasons being they very often don't go all in with hands like ace king ace queen king queen king jack they're very often non all in raise then this means when they do go all in they're all in range contain doesn't contain some of the best open shoves they should have so that's why i make that there and you see he had the 10 8 suited which is often a hand that wants to limp call all in actually instead of go all in dynamic board I don't mind to size up to give us the option to jam the turn. Three quarters all pot. Recreational players very often willing to over invest with draws, even weak draws like gut shots there. So wanting to take advantage of that, they're going to find it hard to directly fold a 10 on the flop as well. Board I'd attack very wide with check raises here. It's completely disconnected. This would be wider than theory, but I'm actually still just going to do it. It's a bit out of line for sure. But we if you have any backdoor hearts, backdoor clubs, backdoor diamonds, we should go for this. And you can even go with a hand like this, honestly, as an exploit. But once called, just not looking to over invest. 
Here, we just basically have no kings. Nine very high up. The flush completes then. We're going to have plenty of flushes. So we don't have to call down all our nines here. I think just check folding is going to be okay here now. We don't have any information that is capable of bluff. A small bet here will be fine to target auto folds. If he's got a king, I don't think he's folding it. He's going to have some 10x of clubs. He's going to have some hands like queen 10, which are never folding. Going for three quarters should be fine. We get a great turn again here. SPR's shallower here and he doesn't have pair plus draws, so half pot can be fine. Whenever he has a pair of three and eight, which is going to be what he mainly has, he's not going to have a draw to go with it. Without knowing how much he min raises, happy to just call ace three. And obviously going all in here, seeing if he wants to hero call us down with some kind of pair. And this is a very spazzy jam, huge over bet. He called us down with an eight, so unlucky for him. He's going to have to, in theory, call down a lot of eight sex. He doesn't have a ton of queens. But if you're playing the guy regularly, definitely something to take a note of and keep in mind. But you wouldn't want to change your whole strategy based off just that one showdown down yet. Maybe he's just a bit more sticky on ace high boards because he's aware that he doesn't have many ace X's. So here's a board where people really underprotect their checking range. And I'm going to go wider than even theory here and just probe that this is an exploit. Not thrilled with the four to straight filling in though. When we did choose to probe this specific combo, blocking some high cards you could have. I'm just going to give up now. We still even just win, which is incredible. We should never win when we check there. So that's a nice result for us. But in general, we can probe versus random people way more than theory because they're not protecting their flop check range enough. And we should very often fire through on the river. This was just a very specific river. Call him with a min probe. I mean, here, a very small size and gets the job done. Folds out any complete air balls. We can obviously continue versus any raise anyway. He checks for us and we shouldn't really be looking to put more into the pot. We want to realise our equity, especially with this nice king. And now I think we should raise. There's plenty of draws which wrap around this king and jack. Queen 10 gets there. But we're definitely obviously not folding king 5. If he has us beat, it is a GG. And he did have exactly queen 10. So just a very big cooler for us there. You definitely don't want to fold. Yes, very often when they lead into you, it will be value. But you're... From database work, you're only looking at about 45% of the time. That's two pair plus. And I beat everything else. So I only needed to win about 30% on the river there. And I'm going to win a bit over half the time. So it's an easy call. And we just have to say GG. Unlucky that he got there for us this time. No real point to raise queen two here. Just calling makes sense. We're either very far ahead or already behind. There's two pairs or better. Queen X. Ace Jack and Fury can limp jam. We're just going to non all in it, but we don't know the player, so we'll call and then decide on the river. Pretty ugly, to be honest. Pot, barrel, jam. Jack 10 gets there. We're basically just hoping that he has pure punts at this point. He could just have 9 4, queen 9, queen 4. He could have also have turned something, like the ace x of clubs. I think I'll just let it go. We're going to have flushes with 9x of hearts, 4x of hearts. We're going to have two pairs with like king 9, king 4. We're going to have some things to call in with him without information. If he's a guy that never bluffs, we just lose all of the bet there. Best case scenario, probably making a few big blinds. So I don't think the risk to reward ratio pays off there. Okay, we'll make these two our last games. We could non all in three, but this all call. Calling has such great implied odds for hand flops very well. Again, here a small bet will just fold out any complete trash. If you've got like jack two of clubs, you're not going to defend right. And that's all that the bet really needs to achieve for it to be good. So we didn't really hit here. We do have two overs, backdoors, etc. This is interesting now. The small blind bets out. If I'm in the button, this is an easy continue. The problem with being in the small blind here is if I call, the button's sometimes going to hit hands like ace, queen, king, queen. 
Might raise them, you just don't get to realise our equity. Plus, one of our gut shots out could have bad implied if someone's on a flush draw. So, I'll let this go only because I don't close the action. If I was on the button here, I'd definitely call. But the combination of not closing the action, the fact that there's a flush draw on there, devaluing one of our gut shot outs and one of our king outs. Okay, not going to veep it this. Guy's got kings as his avatar, so he's played a lot of hands. Let's see if we get any more interesting spots. King Jack, we will play. And 9 4, we will try and expand our range more than theory here. And we'll get punished. But again, I think we should still try it. Those people who don't know. Again, this is a good board to just bet small. Plenty of auto fold hands. Especially if people aren't defending some unnatural combos as wide as theory here. To not have a fold, you need to defend a lot of almost trashy hands. We get called, and very often we're going to still have the best hand here with our King Jack. I don't think he'll have defended enough total trash hands on the flop, so I better just barrel for value myself. Target a 10. Don't let even just a hand like 5-2 of hearts have a free chance to hit two pair or trips, right? If he's not going to bet, if we check anyway. King Jack can go all in, or it can limp as a trap. Pretty close at this stack depth. Must out of a limp. We get a bad flop. Flop that's going to hit his check back range very, very well. This is a call. Um, just checking, realizing our equity would be a disaster to be, to bet and get folded off this versus an unknown player. Especially having the king of clubs. Okay, nothing to do with 5-2. Shame we'll get a walk of our jacks. 8-5 again, it's a little bit wide, but we'll still try. It's not like extremely wide, just a little bit. Going for a lot of min raises here until we find out some information on our villain. 9-4s, another pile of junk. Okay, he's gone all in quite a few times with ISO jams and stuff. This guy's ISO does quite a few times, so I'll now just jam instead of limping this 10 4 suited. And we'll still defend Queen 3. Okay, this is a fantastic flop. People oversee that these boards quite a lot in general, these one high card disconnected. So with that being the case, I will call my best value and look to go all in on the turn versus a barrel to keep his trash in. He's still going to barrel all his aces, kings, queens, 10x's on the turn anyway, right? So when he checks, unlikely he has a 10. If he rivers a king, he'll bet it. He, people do over bet 8 and 2x's and these are not likely to reopen the action, so I'll just bet myself. If he goes all in, not folding this hand, giving only three to win, that's not going to be many chips. This guy's going all in a lot, so I won't min raise as often now. I will bet here. There's still just trash to fold. And I bet here for turn seven. As you see, people very easy to have a bet trash on this board. We have to call ace nine. He's gone all in about six times now, so there's a good chance ace nine is just way ahead of what he's jamming. Okay, fives. Fair enough. At that point, when ace nine is going to be a theory call anyway, so we shouldn't pass up on it when he's been jamming all in a lot. It's the type of guy that could just be jamming any ace, for example, or even like worse hands, just random spazzy hands. Okay, an open ender here. The more passive a guy is, the more we should just bet it and take auto folds. If he's really aggressive, we can consider check it. Theory would check this a lot. I'm going to bet it not knowing the player though. Knowing that we expect people in general to overfold, especially on paired boards. We do see a raise, and now I think we have great implied odds with a call. Just going to call. Often on the lower stakes when regs do find aggressive check raises, 
they're often very often one and done in it or using very small turn sizings and giving up on the river. So I don't see much point to jam over his raise. And when he jams like this, I'm just convinced it's all pretty much always valued. So just folding. I mean, we don't have the odds regardless, even if he was bluffing. But we're going to get paid basically always on our straight outs when he has trips. So we just need to call there, realize our implied odds. Sometimes we win the full stack. Sometimes we have to fold. Sometimes we might check and we can bet small and fold him off any pure backdoor bluff that didn't get there. That's the main goal. 3-4 is not going to be good enough at this stack depth. Expect him to bet because he seems like he's betting pretty much everything. We saw that 7-4 hand as well. So I would definitely look to already attack this player when he bets on high disconnected boards, like a jack 2-4, like um, a 10-3-2, a king 6-3. We'll definitely check reads very aggressively with backdoors versus a player type like that. Anyways, quite a few spins there. We had some nice spots. Hopefully this guy's helps you navigate the $5 spins. And see you in the next video, guys. Create your free account today at rndperker.com and take advantage of our ever-growing video library, coaching and leak finders. See you in the next video guys.